Welcome to Learn From the Experts, presented to you today by Women Business Owners Alliance of Pioneer Valley. WBOA.org is comprised of over 100 women business owners. And I'm Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and my co-host today is... Hi, I'm I Ida Tassinari with uh, Real Living Real Estate, and I'm here to help you find your path home. Okay, and today we have Abby Beal with us. And Abby, could you just introduce yourself and your company to us? Sure. My name is Abby Beal, and mm -hmm. I'm a nationally certified classical homeopath, and my company is called Homeopathy Healings. Okay, and Abby, how did you get involved in this? How did you start your company, and where did you start? Well, actually, it's more of a training. You have to be a homeopath before you can open up a homeopathic practice. Oh, okay. And so my son, when he was nine months old, had ear infections. He had multiple ear infections, and we gave him antibiotic after antibiotic. And mm -hmm. after about the time he was 16 months, the doctors wanted to put tubes in his ears. And I was, as a new mom, just thought, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. And so I went looking for the better way, and I found a homeopath who met with my son and myself, and granted, you know, a 16-month-old can't mm -hmm. be very verbal at the time, but he was able to discern from my observation of my son and him looking at my child that he, did, he needed a remedy. So we mm -hmm. gave him a homeopathic remedy, okay. gave him one remedy, and he never had another ear infection again. Wow. Amazing. And it was one of those, like, wow, that was crazy <laughs> kind of things that, that stuck in my mm -hmm. head for a while. And then after he got sick again on something else, I went back to the homeopath and gave him remedy and he got better and it, it just started my path in, in intrigue and then I started to get treated myself and then I started doing self uh, care at home mm -hmm. and then I became nationally certified over an 11 year process of getting training. 11 years. 11 years. It was part time but okay. I still did 11 years of training and became nationally certified. And what so. goes into it to be, you know, to be certified? So it's, it's a very long process. It's mm -hmm. wonderful though because it's a lot of education. Uh, it's consists of 500 classroom hours, 250 clinical hours, 10 supervised cases, wow. five independent cases, a five-part exam and an interview. Mm -hmm. And um, that in, in and of itself is a huge uh, endeavor. And anybody who gets, uh, it's called a CCH, Certified Classical Homeopath. It's a designation after your name. Um, I totally respect them because I know <laughs> the amount of work that's gone into to getting that, deg that degree, I guess, if you call it. And for those of us who aren't really clear on what homeopathy is, <laughs> can you kind of explain that to us? Like what, you know, what is it? In a nutshell, <laughs> I'll do what I can. It's, it's, okay. It's, it's a pretty broad spectrum concept, but homeopathy is basically the coolest medicine on the planet where you take something that stimulates your body to heal itself. So for example, like this mm -hmm. morning, and it just so happened, I did cut my finger, I had a paper cut. And the best part about this is, if there is a good part of a paper cut, is that if I just keep it clean, it's gonna heal by itself. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the broader types of, of diseases and illnesses that people have and symptoms, sometimes they don't heal themselves. But what homeopathy can do, and these are, these are samples of homeopathic remedies that you can get in a health mm -hmm. food store like Whole Foods. Um, these are the kinds of things that can help your body heal, stimulate the body to heal itself. So homeopathy is based on, it's all natural and it allows the body to heal itself when the right remedy is chosen. Now, does um, our national insurance programs and companies, do they cover mm -hmm. any of the? It's, it is covered if you are a naturopath or a medical doctor that practices homeopathy and you can put it under that kind of licensure. But if you don't have a license to practice those kinds of things, you can't get insurance, unfortunately. But I do know in Washington, they're working on something. Uh, it's called the in Integrative Healthcare Policy Consortium. It's working oh. on getting integrative therapies possibly covered by insurance. Who knows if it'll be in my lifetime or not, but mm -hmm. I hope that they do because I think people should have a choice. Now, is there, is there a registry of all of the certified practitioners? Mm -hmm. There's a website uh, that uh, where the council is called the Council for Homeopathic Certification is one place that people can go but there's even a better place to go it's the National Center for Homeopathy mm -hmm. uh, that is where you can get a lot of general info like what is homeopathy how do you get started on it what's the research around it what are the practitioners and with um, complete disclosure that I'm also a board member for the National Center for Homeopathy and so I, I just think wow. it's it's very cool it's a national organization and I think people could benefit from learning on that website it's homeopathycenter.org. Now did any of our local colleges do they have any classes for this or is it just the classroom um, studies that you did is through the organization. 
Well, there's schools. There are different okay. schools around the country. There actually is one that's it's interesting. It was in Amherst, Mass, called the New England School of Homeopathy, and the people who teach it live in live in Amherst, uh, mm -hmm. but they do teach now in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, so the New England School of Homeopathy is the only school in this area that somebody could you know start taking homeopathic um, lessons mm -hmm. in. But there is one in New York City, and there's a lot of, lot of online learning too as well because. Not everybody is, are, are in those pockets of where people want to be, and it's a, usually a part-time program that people study in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can look online as well. So if someone came to you with a medical problem, mm -hmm. and you, uh, what would you go through the process to determine exactly what the best solution for them? That's a great question. So it's when you call it a medical problem, basically people come with symptoms. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have a diagnosis, and we don't diagnose. We're not trained to diagnose because that's what medical doctors do. Mm -hmm. But you come with a set of symptoms, and we put all those symptoms together. I usually take about two hours on an interview to learn exactly what's going on with somebody. And I ask all kinds of questions. People kind of go, why do you want to know that? Like, I want to know, do you like your... You like ice in your drinks? Do you what position do you sleep in? Um, do you sweat at night? Do hmm. you okay? Um, you know what was your family like? How do you do with conflict? What are you afraid of? I mean, I those are all the pieces of the puzzle that when we learn what that those pieces are, we then put them together and match them to the most appropriate homeopathic remedy. Is so that, this any part is. of a spiritual? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm just saying, you know, with a. Uh, any spiritual uh, background in this? Or no. what is the origin of homeopathy? That's a great question too. Homeopathy started in the 1800s. The gentleman who founded it, his name was Samuel Hahnemann. And he was a German medical doctor who was very upset that when he did leaching and, and bloodletting that people died. And he said, there's gotta be a better way. Yeah, and so he, he so, yeah. stopped <laughs> being a medical doctor and started doing German translations. and and found in one of these translations about this thing called quinine or mm -hmm. um, chinchona bark and uh, you know why it would kill people and so what he did is he did his own little experiment by eating some chinchona bark himself huh. and he was healthy but he got all the symptoms of uh, um, I'm trying to remember what, <laughs> what it was like a malaria type symptom he got oh, fever really? and sweats and diarrhea and heart palpitation all this stuff and then it went away when the chinchona bark went out of his system. And he said, that was interesting. Let me mm -hmm. try that again. And then he realized that if I only do it in a very small amount, that maybe that will make it better. So he made the chinchona bark into what's called a homeopathic dose. And it, it was amazing. It was like the symptoms just started to go away all by themselves. Hmm. And so that was the start of homeopathy in the 1800s. And since then, all these different substances in nature, their plants, minerals, and animals have been tested and tried on you know normal human beings and all the symptoms have been recorded and that's the things those are the things that I've studied. Now what are some of the substances you do use? So they are so I'm going to give you a couple that would be useful for people to use at home so you can go to like a Whole Foods mm -hmm. and some some generalized remedies just for in yeah in general most of the time if people come to me it's for a larger issue than just like a bee bite okay mm -hmm. so let's say you have a bee bite and it's like, oh, it, it stings, it's hot. When you put cold on it, it feels better. Those are what we call modalities. You would mm -hmm. take a remedy that's here called Apis. And I'm just going to pull out one of these blue tubes so you see what a blue tube looks like. This is what homeopathic medicine is. It's not herbs. It's not vitamins. It's not supplements. It is uniquely suited. This is what homeopathy is. So it's not vitamin C and echinacea. People think, oh, I do homeopathy, vitamin C and echinacea. Mm -hmm. like, that's not homeopathy. That's naturopathy. And so Apis is made from a bee stinger. And so it, this is a bee sting made into a homeopathic dose. So if you get a bee sting that has those modalities, the heat and better from cold, you would take this probably every 15 minutes and within an hour, because I took it when I got bee stung, um, it's still sore, but the stinger's gone, the swelling's down. This is also something you would take if, unfortunately, you might have some uh, anaphylactic shock on your way to the hospital, okay, mm -hmm. you're, you're in the ambulance. You're still going to go to the hospital, You're still yes. go to the hospital, sure, but you could take this in, in the possibility of trying to prevent the problem because it's for allergic reactions. Is that a topical no, um, you, application? Are, they're, no, oh, they're okay. little pellets that come out of the tube, and I know they're not going to get these on camera, but they're very little tiny white pellets. Oh, okay. They're sugar pellets that are coated with the substance that they, they need to have and you put them under your tongue. They all taste wonderfully sweet. They all taste the same. That's the cool thing about all of them, but they're all coated with a different substance. Hmm. Hmm. So. Now, does that also have any treatment for weight loss? That seems to be a very, <laughs> very <laughs> popular topic at this time yeah. of the year. Homeopathy doesn't work with, with weight loss, but what people do do if they do come to a homeopath, 
the homeopath can help discern like what might be happening in their life that might be causing stress that causes them to eat or what is it that they're eating like I had a client who came to me and it wasn't so much for weight loss but he was drinking soda well how much soda oh about a pack a day what do you mean a pack a day like like a 12 pack I said of what kind he said the dark kind I like the I like like a coke and a you know a, any a Pepsi and anything that that's like that so that means he not only does he get the sugar but he also gets the caffeine mm -hmm. it's like okay <laughs> so let's have a little conversation about that before mm -hmm. we even talk about a remedy wow. because that's kind of an issue but a lot of times people don't they don't see it the way we see it. We look at right. the whole person, mm -hmm. you know. And he and this person was coming because of violent outbreaks, and you wonder why after yeah. <laughs> sugar and caffeine. And That's of course, true. he <laughs> down as soon as he got off of all that stuff. Now, um, are there a couple more substances that people should have yes, at their house? Definitely, I think one is especially around the holidays. Um, there's one here called Nux Vomica. Oh wow! Nux okay. Vomica. Nux um, Vomica. It's, it's made from a plant, and it's great for hangovers. Mm -hmm. I gave it to my son when he went to college. <laughs> I said, "Here, just don't tell your friends, and don't do this often." <laughs> but on those days that you are really miserable, Nux Vomica could help. You know, with a hangover, or if you eat too much and you have a sour stomach, mm -hmm. um, you you might consider taking Nux Vomica from time to time. It shouldn't be like a tums that you rely on all the time, because this is energy medicine, and, and you don't want to stimulate the energy too much. But it will help mm -hmm. you know, in cases like that. Another one is Arnica. Arnica Montana is, I carry it in my purse because my son plays soccer. And every time he gets hit and bumped and bruised, um, Arnica is like a really cool remedy for those bruises. And one time when my son was really little, he banged his head on a shopping cart. And, and you know, you saw the egg come mm -hmm. up. I had this in my purse. I put some in his mouth and it just like, you could watch it just go right back into oh, the head. It was wow. just like the coolest That's thing amazing. ever. That's amazing. Yeah, it was. There are things, there are times like that that I go, this is so cool. So I just share that because it was, and other people have said, yeah, Arnica is like the coolest thing ever. So I um, highly recommend Arnica. A lot of people start in homeopathy by carrying, you know, Arnica with them. Now, is there a source of this information online? So if I was to go into a Whole Foods or a store mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. uh, to be able to find out where I would start to decide to even Great start question. any of those questions. So I also um, try and help share share remedies. So this is um, Boron, uh, which is the company that makes these blue tubes, B-O-I-R-O-N. And this is something you get in, in Whole Foods for free. And it has just a basic standard hmm. guide that's going to help you to, to at least get started, you know, in the process. There's also some other things um, that I do recommend sometimes. This is a book called Homeopathic Remedies by Asa Hershoff, which is um, a really good book to have at home. So you don't have to go to a homeopath for some general basic mm -hmm. acute things. And like here's, you know, things for the skin, things for coughs, things for uh, circulation disorders or eye inflammation. You know, oh. if you see that kind of stuff, you can look at it, maybe choose a remedy based on what matches your symptoms. And another one, which I love for, for especially new moms, this one I, is my Bible. It's pretty well used. Um, homeopathic Medicine for Children and Infants by Dana Ullman. And it, it really saved my, you know what, one night when my son had croup. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So, so is there a remedy for uh, an infant that is not sleeping through the night was always my big curse. <laughs> <laughs> there are remedies for that. There are so many things that surround that issue. It's not as simple as a bee bite or, you know, you got hit in the head. This is more around, well, what's the deal with the child during the day? Do they get diaper rash? If they do, is it really bright red? So there are different things we want to know that make it a more holistic recommendation. That's, again, where a homeopath would, would okay. come in. I have one more question. Yeah. For general inflammation mm -hmm. of the body, like your arthritis, arthritis and any of the other mm -hmm. conditions, is there one or multiple? Multiples. So Multiples. it's not an easy fix. No, it's not. It's not you know, people say, well, what, what do you got for headaches? You mm -hmm. know, they're expecting me to say ibuprofen. You know, it's like, I would take ibuprofen. That'll work for everybody. But in homeopathy, it's very individualized because okay. if we took both of you and said, oh, tell me about your headaches, they probably would be different. They'd have mm -hmm. different modalities, come on at different times, last different, you know, different time frames. And so we would have to look at how do you experience that headache, not the headache that everybody would get because everybody has a different depression. Same thing. Everyone experiences depression differently. And so, yes, there are remedies for depression, but which one depends on how you're experiencing it. That's okay. the beauty of, of homeopathy. So uh, with our society today, we have a lot of uh, children that are on medication mm -hmm. for learning disabilities and hyperactive, yes. yes. So would a mother decide to go to someone like yourself to get an alternative choice instead of you know giving the child uh, a heavier medication? 
I would love I would love a parent to come to me first before they go to a medication. Homeopathy works most of the time, but not always, and it depends on how good the mm-hmm. homeopath is and how good the, the parents are at giving their case of the child. But I, I believe that if people would come to us first before they go to the medicine route, that we'd probably save about 80% of the people going on that route, and the other 20% would probably have to go still. But, you know, we usually get the people after. They've right. been on the medication for five years. They, they're having more side effects. They're like, they don't want to be on it anymore. Then we get the clients. And I just wish it was the other way around. I wish mm-hmm. people would think of a homeopath first. Now, do you have any uh, groups that try to go to Washington? You said there is some uh, legislation coming up soon mm-hmm. to try to open up the path to, to receive services so mm-hmm. insurance would possibly cover it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is probably, this is the first time I've ever had a conversation with anybody about okay, this yeah. to try to bring it more to the, you know, common uh, parent, the mm-hmm. average citizen. They have a better choice of giving them heavy duty drugs. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm on the board of the National Center for Homeopathy because I want more people. When I tell people I'm a homeopath, it goes like this. They're not sure what it is. They don't know what it is. They have no idea, or they think it's vitamin C and echinacea, which is okay, but I need to educate them, and that takes a lot of time, and when you meet them at a meeting, you can't tell them all that stuff. So to me, the National Center for Homeopathy, we have webinars that are free Mm -hmm. that people can go to online. They're all recorded online that are basic. They call it homeopathy for moms, but it's really for novices. It's really for anybody. So anybody who wants, go to homeopathycenter.org, go check out the webinars because we really are trying to spread the word about homeopathy to the consumer. Mm-hmm. Is there also a, a connection with dementia and Alzheimer's? Is there any kind of treatment that would help somebody dealing with a family member? There, there are some remedies. I would say that it's probably not that effective, mm-hmm. but it, it, I'm looking into it in my own practice. I have some elderly clients that I'm working with and hoping that, that mm-hmm. the intervention of homeopathy might be helpful to them. It's a hard one to, to deal with, mm-hmm. but there are some for you know uh, hardening of the arteries or slowing down kinds mm-hmm. of things that are associated with dementia and Alzheimer's. So do you have any added um, closing facts that you'd like to add to the audience so they can get more information about you and your services? Well, I, I just want to encourage people to go more natural if they can. Mm-hmm. You know, that I totally believe that medicine is a great thing. I think if I'm in a car accident, I want the painkillers, I want the <laughs> surgery, you know, mm-hmm. I want the tests, I want yes. all that. That's terrific and medical science is wonderful. But I also think that there's a complement with homeopathy and that you put homeopathy into the mix, the person could heal better, maybe faster, mm-hmm. you know, with less painkillers. I've seen that a lot. And so I would really hope that there would be more people that look at homeopathy not as just an alternative, but mm-hmm. as a complement. Mm-hmm. And how does that compare to Eastern medicine? Which is is Chinese medicine yes. kind of thing? Yeah. They're both energy medicine but they they act in a different way. When mm-hmm. someone says they're chi they're energy. They're yes. ener- yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, is that part of what you do or that's completely different? It's really different, but it's it's still energy. Usually when someone is working with their chi it's because of usually because of, of a physical issue. Sometimes it's a mental, emotional issue. Homeopathy deals with all of it. And so, and it's also not invasive. You don't have to put needles in your body, and which is still right. okay. I do acupuncture. I like acupuncture. Mm-hmm. So um, it's different, but still, it's on the same realm. It's and if you look at the medical model and everybody else, you know, Eastern medicine, homeopathy, you know, naturopathy, all that stuff goes into that box over there. So. And you have a, a particular website that people can go to for more information on you in particular? I have a Facebook page. Okay. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I think the National Center for Homeopathy has a great website. And I really don't need to recreate it at this point. That's great. So it's just facebook.com forward slash homeopathy healings with an S. Okay. And before we um, close yeah. off, I wanted to ask you now, mm-hmm. these substances, you said you could, they could get them in Whole, whole Foods. foods. How about a regular food. pharmacy? Is that a place for it too? I, some may have them. Um, mm-hmm. I would say the vitamin shop is another place, at least okay. in Connecticut there's a vitamin shop. Um, whole Foods, Better Life Foods, um, the Herbarium I think has some of them. They don't have a lot of them, but they have some. Um, any kind of, of a natural food store. And they are so inexpensive. That's the other thing. I didn't mention that. Each one of these tubes is anywhere between 6 and $10. Oh, okay. wow. That's yeah. it. These, mm-hmm. this, is my, this is my travel kit, and <laughs> I, it will be there for a long time. Some of these are really old remedies, and, and they'll be there for a long time because you don't need a lot of it. And so the shelf right. life is? It's a long time. It's a long time. 
Very good. Definitely. That's good. Well, thank you very much, Abby. Thank you very and much to for those of you listening, if you'd like to find out more information about Abby, you can go to wboa.org. And thank you for joining us today.